Good morning. Today is Wednesday the 15th of July and it's the Feast of St. Bonaventure. In the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that just as we celebrate the heavenly birthday of the Bishop St. Bonaventure, we may benefit from his great learning and constantly imitate the ardour of his charity. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. The first reading is from the readings of the Ferrier from Isaiah. The second reading is from Matthew. In this first reading, Assyria is seen as the rod of God. God uses this exterior warlike nation to punish Israel. The Gospel is from Matthew, Matthew chapter 11, verses 25 to 27. Jesus exclaimed, I bless you, Father, Lord of heaven and of earth, for hiding these things from the learned and the clever, and revealing them to mere children. Yes, Father, for that is what it pleased you to do. Everything has been entrusted to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except a Father, just as no one knows the Father except the Son, and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. The Gospel of the Lord. A word about St Bonaventure, and then a word about the readings. St Bonaventure was uh, in the third, uh, in the, from the 13th century, um, 1220 to 1280, uh, roughly the same time as St Thomas Aquinas, and a number of other great theologians. Um, and it was a time of great flowering of the scholastic movement, it's called, the scholastic studies um, in the church. And St. Bonaventure is one of the great philosophers and theologians. He was Franciscan by origin, um, not whereas St. Thomas Aquinas was a Dominican, and was slightly different in his approach in terms of philosophy, he felt it was impossible to do philosophy without belief in God as the Creator, whereas St. Thomas was keener on trying to work out what can be worked out by reason alone before one comes to a belief in the Divine. In theology, he tended more towards understanding God's role in how we understand the world, perhaps more tending towards the work of Plato and the ideas that are in God's, God's mind determining what happens on earth. He was a humble man, tried to avoid being promoted in the church, eventually uh, became a, a bishop uh, but only for a year and then he died. And all through his teaching, his formation and what he did for others, he preached what was picked up in the, the gospel today that the belief and the trust of ordinary people in God's goodness, in God's salvation, um, was to be valued more than any of the deep theological learnings that the theologians came up with. He did struggle with how providence works, and the first reading brings up that problem. We hear that from the prophet Isaiah that God has used Assyria to punish Israel, Right, the Syrians have gone too far, but um, there's this whole sense that somehow God is manipulating all the nations of the world to carry out his will, that he's intimately involved in politics. I do believe that the world is in God's hands, but I don't believe we should think that God is trying to plan in advance. Really, we are in time, he isn't, but trying to plan in advance what's going to happen and that we can try and say, God, why have you done this? Why haven't you done that? I do believe, after the event, from our point of view, we trust that we're in God's hands and that he will be with us no matter what happens. And Isaiah uses a, a wonderful image. He talks of God looking down on the world and seeing deserted eggs, i.e. the eggs of birds that have been abandoned, and how he picks them up and looks after those eggs and helps them hatch and grow. And that whatever happens in the world, 
as the, the psalmist says in the same thing, we can always put our trust in God. God is looking at the world in terms of finding deserted eggs, to finding us as we go through difficulties. And if we put our trust in him, he will care for us. We turn now to our bidding prayers. The response is, Lord, nourish the lives of your people. Lord, nourish the lives of your people. Christ, the good shepherd, laid down his life for his sheep. Let us praise him with grateful hearts as we pray. Lord, nourish the lives of your people. Christ our Lord, in the holy pastors, you reveal your love for us. May we never be deprived of the care you show through them. Lord, nourish the lives of your people. Through your sacred ministers, you are present in our midst as the shepherd of our souls. Never cease to guide us through their teaching and encouragement. Lord, nourish the lives of your people. In the saints, you lead your people. You manifest your power of healing souls and of bodies. Remain always with us to renew our lives in holiness. Lord, nourish the lives of your people. By the example of the saints, you instruct your faithful in the ways of wisdom and love. Through our pastors, help us grow to the full stature of perfection. Lord, nourish the lives of your people. Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Almighty God and Father, on this feast of St. Bonaventure, enlighten our minds with the splendour of his teaching, and help us to imitate his ardent love of you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you, with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Have a good day.